Thank you very much, sir, for your valedictory address. And now I would request Bill Gates to deliver the keynote address. Well, it's, it's exciting to be here today. Uh, and I really appreciate the, the incredibly kind introduction from my good friend, the Honorable Chief Minister Naidu. Uh, I'm also glad that uh, we have so many other uh, important people here, uh, the IT Minister, Agriculture Minister, uh, Minister of Markets, Speaker of the House, uh, uh, many members of Parliament, a member of the Assembly, uh, Principal Secretaries for Agriculture, uh, many farmers, uh, students, and, and friends. Uh, I really was excited when I first met the Chief Minister uh, over 20 years ago now because uh, people were saying to me there's someone who believes in digital technology and digital dashboards even more than you do. Uh, and I found that hard to believe, but when we met he had his digital equipment computer uh, and he was really uh, painting a vision of how we could make government uh, better by using this very advanced tool. And he and I have completely agreed on that uh, every step of the way. Uh, today is a real milestone in that. Uh, today we can talk about that we really are starting to use dashboards for agriculture and health. Uh, and things like Kaizala are connecting people together uh, for great government activities. Uh, so it's been a real journey over these last 20 years making that vision a reality. I expect we'll be accelerating. In the years ahead, we'll be able to uh, move very, very quickly. Today, uh, I want to focus particularly on some of the innovations uh, going on in agriculture. Of course, as the Chief Minister said, the future of Andhra Pradesh is dependent on the future of its smallholder farming, farmers. It's great to hear the plan to translate this commitment into action on everything from improving roads and connectivity to investing in micro-irrigation and digital soil mapping, Andhra Pradesh is taking bold steps to transform the agriculture sector and set a model for others. Two examples that I'm very impressed with, uh, one is the uh, Mega Seed Park, uh, which really is a first of its kind. Uh, and it will make available lots of high-quality seed. And, and coupled with that is the new e-seed distribution application, d Krishi, which will help farmers access quality seed in a timely manner and ensure that the government's resources are being wisely used. These are the kind of innovations that will help achieve the Chief Minister's goal of sustained double-digit economic growth in AP over the next decade. Everyone in this room shares the goal of a prosperous India. And so we must also share an interest in the process of agricultural transformation. When I say transformation, I mean a shift from agriculture based merely on subsistence to agriculture that runs like a business. It's efficient, profitable, and meets the needs of both producers and consumers. There's basic statistics uh, that I'm sure uh, that many of you are familiar with. More than half of India's population works in agriculture. In rural India, three quarters of working women are making their living in agriculture. Just under half of India's population suffers from malnutrition. And over 300 million Indians live below the poverty line. Now these might seem like uh, different data points, but in fact, they're closely related. It's the hundreds of millions of smallholder farmers who are most likely to be malnourished and impoverished. And it's smallholder women farmers who are so often trapped in subsistence farming. It is this connection that explains why agriculture transformation is such a high leverage investment in the future and why, along with health, it's a top priority for our foundation. If we can help smallholder farmers 
to be more productive and earn a good income than to adopt a phrase, we can th kill three birds with one stone. First, we can turn the largest economic sector in the country into a source of growth instead of a drag on the economy. Second is we can make sure that growth is inclusive and that it not only leads to a higher GDP, but also lifts people out of poverty. Third, we can produce enough nutritious food to support a healthy and well-educated labor force for the future, when the Indian economy will depend even more on highly skilled workers. What I just described has been the recipe for economic transformation across Asia, in China, in South Korea, in Japan. And it will also be a key element of the recipe for India's economic transformation. To catalyze this chain reaction, we have to focus on two things, increasing the productivity of smallholder farmers and connecting them to markets so that they can prosper from their work. In the case of crops, I think about increasing productivity in two ways. The first is better varieties of seeds to improve yields, nutrition, and tolerance to stresses such as flooding, drought, and other effects of climate change. For example, scientists at Erie, the International Rice Research Institute, developed a flood tolerant version of the popular rice variety known as Swarna that can survive full submergence for more than two weeks. Swarna Sub 1 is now being used by millions of smallholder farmers, especially in Eastern Asia. But many smallholder farmers still use seed varieties that are decades old, so they're not realizing the benefits of newer, high-yielding, and more resilient seeds. In fact, the Rice Monitoring Project in Eastern India analyzed samples from thousands of farms and showed that farmers were swapping out rice varieties at an even slower rate than we had thought. Modern plant breeding techniques, including DNA analysis, can double or even triple the annual increase in crop yields and lead to hardier varieties. Erie and the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute have already proven the effectiveness of some of these approaches in their work modernizing rice breeding programs. AP is already a major seed producer for Indian South Asia, and it is well positioned to become a hub for seed innovation. AP doesn't have to look far to find the know-how to capitalize on this opportunity. It can leverage the local expertise in GIS and its world-class IT sector, along with low-cost commercial software and DNA testing services to develop better varieties more quickly. The Mega Seed Park will drive innovation not only for higher yielding crops, but also varieties of regional importance, including more nutritious and resilient non-cereal crops like pulses. Even with these advances, local seed companies that market new varieties to smallholder farmers need to be confident that farmers will buy their seeds before they take on the expensive and risky process <coughs> of introducing new varieties. This bring me, brings me to the second way I think about increasing productivity. Understanding what varieties farmers are actually growing in their field. In the U.S. Corn Belt, seed companies test new varieties on thousands of farms before they make the final choice on which ones to bring to market. For public breeding programs in AP and other parts of South Asia, this step is often missing. So most companies only sell tried and true older varieties. Imagine what would happen if every farmer in AP was growing the latest varieties bred for today's environment and production system. A data feedback loop can help bridge the gap between innovation happening <coughs> in the public breeding programs and the products farmers need to boost productivity. Since nearly half of households in AP rear livestock, we also have to think about productivity from that perspective. One priority is animal health. Diseases can wipe out flocks and herds, driving smallholders even further into poverty. For example, Newcastle disease can kill three-quarters of the chickens in a flock 
during an outbreak. Through a partnership with Hester Biosciences, there's now a vaccine that costs just three cents a dose. India is also pioneering vaccines and medicines for other co costly livestock diseases, including some that spread to humans, such as porcine cystocoriasis. Cystocercosis. This disease is endemic to India swine herds and is the most frequent preventable cause of epilepsy in developing countries. It kills 50,000 people a year. Another priority is animal breeding. Consider the dairy sector. India is the world's largest milk producer, but this success is owed to a very large number of animals producing fairly small amounts of milk. In AP, many of the indigenous cattle breeds owned by smallholder farmers produce only a fraction of the milk that's possible. But crossbred cows could yield more than twice as much milk as the typical indigenous breed. We are supporting the National Dairy Plan to increase milk production across India by six million tons annually. One promising element of the plan is a partnership to introduce sex-sorted semen technology. With India increasing artificial insemination to 100 million doses annually, this means that not only are we breeding cows that produce more milk, but we're also increasing the portion of female calves being born. Of course, boosting productivity isn't just something that plant breeders or veterinarians do in a lab. The innovations need to get from the lab to farmers' fields. For that, digital financial services can help because smallholder farmers need to save and borrow money to buy seeds, fertilizer, and veterinary care. In the old cash economy, saving was insecure and borrowing was extremely expensive for most people. India is becoming the leader in digital financial inclusion. The combination of a world-class biometric ID system, investments in public infrastructure like the MPCI Unified Payment Interface, and the recent launch of payment banks produce changes and opportunities that were unthinkable just a few years ago. Now we have to be sure that this platform helps solve the challenges smallholder farmers face. For example, the current fertilizer subsidy program is expensive and it promotes fertilizers that aren't always the right one for the farmer's soil. So farmers don't see as much gain in productivity. It's great to see AP taking the first step to fix these problems by delivering the fertilizer subsidy through digital transfer. Once farmers are biometrically verified through ADHAR, they receive recommendations for the right amount of fertilizer for their crop, depending on the quality of their soil and the size of their land. This helps farmers balance nutrients to revitalize their soil, and it increases crop productivity. It also reduces widespread overuse of fertilizer. Direct transfer of fertilizer subsidies can be quite transformative in other ways. It will help governments minimize leakages and it will bring farmers into the formal economy. Once farmers are linked to India's digital financial system, <coughs> they'll be able to receive social welfare payments directly and save their harvest proceeds in secure interest-bearing accounts, making it easier to buy seeds and fertilizer in the planting season. And they'll be able to send and receive money simply and safely with the click of a button. It's also important for farmers to have reliable information so they can make the most strategic choices about managing their farms. For many farmers, this starts with understanding the ground beneath their feet, what crops will grow best in it, what fertilizer is required to make it more productive. AP's Soil Health Card has helped farmers, but it takes a long time to do the lab work needed to produce the cards, so they haven't reached all farmers to make the difference everybody's hoping for. As the Chief Minister knows, innovation in soil mapping can overcome this constraint. One model is what our foundation did in Africa 
called the Soil Information Service, which combines...